Okay, we're going to transfer the gyros. This is always a little bit scary moment halfway the flight where we're going to switch from the red numbers to the blue numbers and uh, yeah we're going to move the gyro unit so we rely on these things so we it's it's a bit of a, a tricky thing to do but it has to be done first of all if I mess up I don't want the airplane to change its course because we're going the right direction so I'll set the heading book center set the prepare nav off and make sure we have enough time 300 kilometers till the next changeover point so we've got some time we don't have to rush so on the nav log you note the fork 2.1 degrees so by this amount we need to change our gyros and on the overhead panel this is the gyro control panel which we're going to use to do this so I have to make sure the correction um, beacon is set to ref first. First we're going to always change the reference gyro and it's in DG, directional gyro. And now we can actually just change it. We, do, we know the airplane is not following whatever I'm changing now. So where do we want to change that? If we look at the main gyroscopic unit when we look at the course we're flying, we should fly course 174.7 so 174.7 is actually the wind corrected course so the needle there the little triangle I mean is the one we're going to change and this is going to be 2.1 degrees to the right so let's let's just give it a try so course set how about that? Ah, see, wrong direction. How about that? That's back in the middle. How does that look? Yeah, that's about two degrees right. So once we're happy with that, can switch the correction unit to the main gyro and do the same. So now we should line the two needles up again. How's that? Oh, maybe a little bit too far. How's that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's close enough and we need to set a new course in our active unit so we were following 174.7 now we're going to follow 176.8 176.8 and because the computer thought for a second we were flying the wrong direction or the wrong course or drifting of course we need to change to Z, it's only small now because it's only 2 degrees if you're flying the northern polar regions and you have a, a 40 degree fork that makes a huge difference but we know we didn't change our course so we know our whatever error Z there is not true so we can just reset the Z error to 0 and we're back on course and because we're back on course we can set the prepare nav back to 1 and that's it we've changed the gyro and actually the next course is not going to be 224.9 it's going to be 227.0 so in the standby unit we'll change to 227.0 Hold on. Okay, we have uh, 
40 kilometers to go to Timor. I'm happy to start the descent now, but we just need to have a quick look at how deep we can go. So let's have a look at the map here, Timor, and switch to low altitude airways. Not because we're following low altitude airways, this lag doesn't even exist in the low altitude, but sometimes it gives some information on the minimum airway altitude. So this one has 8000 minimum, and that is until Belavo. So 8000 there, I'm just going to also look at the VFR chart. So 7000 feet is the, the highest sector altitude there, 8200 in this sector. Yeah, let's not go lower than 10,000 for now, I think that's low enough. So, once we are ready, we're just going to uh, do the little passenger talk, switch on the seatbelt signs, and uh, hello ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the flight so far, we're about to start the descent, please pay attention, blah 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 blah. And then, when we're ready to descend, if we're really high up, we can go to Mach, Mach hold and reduce the power but since our change over altitude is maybe a couple of, a couple of feet below us I'm happy to just switch to speed hold and this will keep us 520 km per hour during, during the whole descent until 10,000 feet so also we need to set the alt select to 10,000 or flight level 100, I must say. Um, yeah, next job for the flight engineer to keep an eye on the pressurization. So, the cabin altitude is descending, but not as quick as the outside. Uh, it's all automatic, um, but you keep, keep an eye, can keep an eye on it. And uh, yeah, it works. Oh, I see a red light. Um, yeah, interesting, the brake emergency accumulator has been isolated during the whole flight. But you can see there is there's a little um, hydraulic leak there, maybe. So we need to press accumulated charge every now and then. So we just press that. Top it up. And let it go. Obviously don't do that when your <laughs> main hydraulic systems are lower than your brake emergency hydraulic pressure but as long as these systems are working every now and then just press and hold and you have the, the numbers correct 8 tons of fuel remaining should be enough it's not an awful lot but it's enough and did I miss the changeover? we're at course 213 yeah, 213, we just changed over. So the next course is going to be 175 to Lukov. No, from Lukov. We're going to Lukov, 175 to PLO. zero. And that is going to be 68.7 kilometers. So SP um, this way 68.7. There. So just um, just a bit of an approach briefing. I have found online a very very old plate of Plovdiv. Please don't ever use this for actual navigation. I'll show you how old this plate is. There's a grass runway. Um, I know for a fact that grass runway is now the main terminal and you can see the taxiways 7 and 6. That's where the main terminal is. So this plate is from well last updated in 2001 so it's about 16 years old don't use this for real world navigation but for in the flight simulator why not we'll just use it and we're just going to have a look at the ILS plates ILS 30 assuming the frequency is still the same I think so because if I double check that here in the navlog 
um, this is sort of current information or information directly from the explain database so it shows ILS 30009 this one 9 and the runway is 2500 meters that's long enough for us Let's see if that's still the same uh, yeah the, the runway is the same okay so after passing the Plofte VWAR 114 which we have to pass at 8800 feet we're going to fly outbound 142 until let's call it 15 and then we'll turn left during this lag we can descend down to 7 let's call it 7500 feet and then we'll turn left in the turn we can descend to 6,000 feet or 5,200, 5,520. We could actually use meters. Nah, let's let's keep it in feet. Keep it easy. And as soon as we're on the localizer, we can go down in steps down to 4,540 feet, down to 3,230 feet, and at 7.4 dme in miles, that is, we can follow the glide slope out to marker at 1340 and the missed approach will be initiated at an altitude of 800 feet um, if we don't see the runway if we do see the runway then we'll land but if we don't see the runway which we have to assume oh we're turning why are we turning because we're on a turning point yeah briefing will continue in a minute First we have a look at the navigation. So we have passed our waypoint 175.0 is our current course and the next one is going to be 161.2 and that's a very short lag. 161.2 Actually it's about time we should switch to conventional navigation there. 161.2 for a distance of an SP only 19 kilometers. It's almost not worth it programming the NVU for such short lag. 19. Okay, so um, yeah, just to finish the briefing, if it's a missed approach, we'll climb to 4 DME and then turn right to uh, basically right and downwind and in a missed approach we climb to an altitude of um, let's call it 4000 feet uh, any questions? no, no questions uh, the only question I would have is why would the procedure be over the high terrain if the other side is so low but um, sure they have their reasons so we'll keep this handy um, frequency 109 or decimal 9 or and the approach course 304 those are the numbers we need to remember really right um, before we run out of navigation miles we have 62 kilometers to go sorry 43 only to go and we are currently on the course 175 which means we passed um, we pass Lukov, we're on track to BLO, 17.5 so let's go here 17.5 and NAV1 is pointing straight ahead, 37 kilometers to go 34, that's a slow distance. Yeah, so our navigation is still accurate. This is a good moment to switch to conventional nav. Although we don't have to, but uh, yeah, why not? We'd have to do it eventually. So just showing here on the map what we're going to do. After BLO, we'll switch to this radial, which is radial 161. So let's go to heading mode now heading mode set course 161 
one six one. One six one. And don't forget the OBS selectors here. One six one. One six one. Okay. So just to increase our descent rates, I'm just going to uh, give us some speed brakes there. Still a bit high. And I'll just flick this again, VOR and heading. So now we have a course bar. And the next frequency is going to be fourteen nine for plof diff. So we leave this radial here and then intercept the plof diff course fourteen nine. So I'll set this one on two fourteen nine. Distance in miles there. That's fine. So we're at an altitude of seven kilometers. The DME shows about seven kilometers, so we're pretty much overhead. Course bar is coming into the middle. RMI is starting to turn. On the heading book, we'll just turn to the next course. Needle is falling. So now we have abandoned the MVU, I'm just going to set the turn anticipation to zero. So otherwise it might start flicking forward and backward. Right, uh, we're too close to the beacon to fly on a radial, but uh, we're pretty close to the radial as soon as it comes into the middle. I'll set it to nav mode, or VOR mode again. And then we need to keep an eye on the distance, or actually on the, the radial what is that? 297. So that's 117 on 2. Passing fly level 210. So radial 117. Where are we? There. 9, 10, 11. 117 is pretty much now. So, turn left, 117, set the course to 117, set the OBS to 117, and set the frequency to 14.9. Yeah, the needle is pretty much in the middle, switching to VOR1 mode, and now we're in VOR mode on track to Plovdiv, our last waypoint.